Welcome to Oh My God Ministries. I am your host, Anita Morris, and I'm just going to go into prayer, and we are going to talk about um, evils that our neighbor or our relatives put upon us, and sometimes it can also bring, um, what do you call it, judgment upon ourselves by God when we see our neighbor or we see our our relatives suffering and then we laugh and mock them so we're gonna look at the Old Testament of Obadiah and so let's go into prayer Heavenly Father we thank you we thank you Father for the joy of the Lord being our strength we thank you Lord God that we don't have to gloat or either celebrate people's misery that's not what you declare for us that's not what you desire for us but Lord God we pray for our enemies you said to do good, to love mercy, and to do justice. And so help us to be the humankind which you called us to do and to be in this earth. To exhibit your righteousness, your justice in the earth. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. I'm going to read the background of Obadiah. And Obadiah, it's... It's called, historically, the background to the book of Obadiah is the second forced migration of exile from Judah in 587 BC. During this time, Nebuchadnezzar, the commander of charge of the Babylonian army, had attacked, seized, and burned the palace, the temple, and all major edifices in Jerusalem. Judah had been annexed. 10 years earlier in 597 BC when Joachim relinquished his throne and was taken to Babylon along with a first wave of Judean royal officials, elites, priests, and other noble skilled workers for Babylonian economic gain. So they were forced into exile for, to enhance the gain of the Babylonian Empire. The second displacement of Judeans to Babylon was a further devastation of a blow to the vassal nation that was already broken. So it devastated them again. So a second blow. To add to that painful fracture, the Edomites, geographical neighbor and related by blood, as descendants of Esau, if you're familiar with Jacob and Esau, they were twin brothers. One came out before the other, okay, which was Esau, the hairy one. And Jacob came out second, but they were twins at birth. And one was favored above the other one, which was Jacob was favored by his mother, the matriarch. But Esau was favored by the father, by of course Isaac okay so Esau sold his birthright his lifeline for a morsel of bread and stew for provision for food okay and lo and behold that devastated how he would encounter his his way of life okay some decisions are consequential sins and which devastates his harmony in his life to sell his birthright for something that's temporary to fulfill a quick hunger instead of having patience in the end. So his relative in the book of Obadiah is talking about that same nation of descendants of Esau, Esau who is showing disdain and striking a really bad blow at their relatives Judah and um, the Israelites because of their destruction, their exile to the Babylonian. So when people are mocking you, your relatives are mocking you because you are already shown some kind of suffering, but they are taking joy in celebrating your suffering during the time that you're suffering, that is a evil in God's eyes. Okay, and that's what Obadiah is exclaiming in the book of Obadiah of the Old Testament. Okay, so Esau, okay, 
and the, they, they cut off the men and women and children fleeing from their lives by handing them over to the Babylonians. So the Esau, the descendants of Esau, which is the Edomites, not only celebrated their doom and destruction of the Babylonians, but they also lended and gave out and cut the men and women and the children who were fleeing for their lives that were seeking refuge and they gave them up just like some people um, would attack people trying to cross the borders but they gave them up to the Babylonians and did not seek to provide relief in this book of Obadiah the shortest book in the Old Testament speaks volumes about betrayal and the desire for revenge against a neighbor, one's own brother, okay, a relative. A neighbor or relative's ill action becomes a source for a curse according to the Psalm 137, 7 through 9. The motif of maldiction against the Edomites has a unique role in the Hebrew Bible. In Lamentations, in Ezekiel, Joel, or Joel, Amos, Malachi all share this same exact unique role how the Edomites celebrated the suffering of their relatives okay instead of praying for them instead of providing relief they harmed them insulted them and and that took another devastating blow it says the atrocious atrocious or atroc atrocity actions of one's enemy is understood however being trapped deceived and plundered by a neighbor or relative is a very different situation it hurts even more the fact that one neighbor has turned away from another neighbor relative has turned against relative is seen as something that requires more than the standard reprimand throughout the 21 verses of obadiah has 21 verses issues of betrayal and desire for vengeance cut across the text so do you see where we're at in the context of our society if you see betrayals distrust you're working with somebody or you're a part of an organization and they're just cutthroat you, do, you know it's supposed to be uniformity or some kind of um cohesive teams and they are are seeking vengeance seeking their doom or co committing malice or just betraying one another and it just cut at the heart and God does not like that it says we know that families and religious communities should be among the last place that exhibit this betrayal and vengeance patterns okay but ironically where neighbors and sisters and brothers gather we witness these traits it's holiday season sometimes you might be among family siblings who have this trait of animosity jealousy strife confusion wickedness going on okay and God is angered by it okay and it says the reader or who authored this particular article his name is John J. Han. He is a Korean native, okay? And he shows that he is of a Korean American descent and a third generation Christian. He tells his story his maternal grandmother was one of the first women to be educated by missionaries from the United States. For her generation, education was generally only for men and boys. She once noted that she was both grateful and embarrassed by to be literate, okay? She grew up in what we now call North Korea. After hearing and embracing the gospel, she was baptized, trained, and became an itinerant preacher. 
she went on from village to village sharing the gospel but for her in-laws and others in her immediate community she was betraying the tradition or traditional religions of ancient Korea she was ostracized ostracized by her own family when her husband died she was seen as the source of his death she was left with nothing except her two children her escape to the South Korea is a modern day tale like that of Harriet Tubman the Underground Rail Railroad who was an abolitionist to the Underground Railroad refugees seeking to be freed from slavery she and her children escaped by hiding by day and traveling on foot at night similar stories in African American tradition Native American tradition Korean tradition and even probably you could see it in the Jew tradition as well as we read in the Old Testament and also when you see people who are, are trying to leave uh, atrocities or genocides of such or or places even now who are seeking refuge in the United States but being blocked and some people who are relatives such as Mexicans who are American Mexican American who have native land or have family in native um, Mexico they might be you know mocking each other I don't know their intimate family or their uh, situation at home but God is not pleased when we start mocking that we have the upper hand and they don't but we need to pray and seek out the the benefit for the whole and seek out their best interest which the Edomites did not do for the Israelites and furthermore he continues he says North Koreans and South Koreans are brothers and sisters however betrayal and the persistent desire for revenge or the threat of judgment and war is constantly at bay both North and South Koreans see themselves as victim and the other as aggressor like Edom sometimes we see that on world news North Korea South Korea we just saw recently a couple of months back that um, it was a, a landmark of a historic moment when President and Trump and uh, was available to see the demilitarized zone come together North Korea South Korea who um, came and brought unity at that moment and but however we do know like he mentioned there's always a possible threat of the two uh, related nations at war with each other with warriors on each side and North ready to um, begin pilage and it reads as far as the Obadiah is concerned he was so much concerned with their relevancy how the Edomites treated their relatives and neighbor okay so going on to reading and verse 1 the vision of Obadiah this is not my vision but this is a vision of the minor prophet Obadiah thus says the Lord God concerning Edom we have heard a report from the the Lord do you ever receive a report card as children when we receive the report card we wanted to have all A's all approvals all excellence all A's and B's and we didn't want C's and D's but imagine this as a report guard report card God has given a nation and God has given a report card for Obadiah to proclaim to the Edomites so here's your report card nation of Edom or say here's your report card nation of such and such okay it can be whoever it can be United States it can be um, North Korea it can be South Korea it can be any nation that's seeking out harm to exploit and to bring harm to another nation for their own benefit and use and to not help and seek out their welfare of their allies and friends or relatives okay and that's exploitation okay 
It says, Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations. Rise up! Let us rise against it for battle. I will surely make you least among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. Your proud heart has deceived you. Your proud heart has deceived you, you that live in the clefts of the rock, whose dwelling in in whose dwelling is in the heights. So that's really high and lofty, high and lifted up. You say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Who's capable of, um, of bringing me down to the ground? Though you soar aloft like the eagle, okay? You are soaring, you are thriving, O nation. Though your nest is set among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. If thieves came to you, if plunderers by night, how you have been destroyed. So if they come to you by night, would you not be destroyed? Would they not steal only what they wanted? It's a rhetoric. Yes, they will. If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? Yes, they will. How Esau has been a pillage. His treasures searched out. All your allies have deceived you. They have driven you to the border. Your confederates have prevailed against you. Those who ate your bread have set a trap for you. There is no understanding of it. On that day, says the Lord, I will destroy the wise out of Edom and understanding out of Mount Esau. Your warriors shall be shattered, O Timon, so that everyone from Mount Esau will be cut off. For the slaughter and violence done to your brother Jacob. So this is why. There's the reasoning, reasoning of God. There's the motive for the slaughter and violence done to your brother, your relative Jacob. You remember Jacob, right? Remember as we talked in the beginning as regarding Esau and Jacob. They were twin brothers. And Esau did not want to bring relief to Jacob, his descendants, but continued to cover them in slaughter and violence and shame. So God has declared in verse 10 of Obadiah, For the slaughter and violence done to your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. Have you ever been in a situation where you are around your family members and that people are mocking you and shaming you and they are take joy in your calamity, they take joy as an expression, oh, that's what he, he needs to go through or that's what she needs to go through to humble herself. God doesn't need to destroy somebody's goods or take everything they have to humble somebody, okay? That is also to testify of your faith and your actions to show compassion as well. It says, on the day that you stood aside, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you too were like one of them. You were a mocker like the enemies of Jacob. But you should not have gloated over your brother on the day of his misfortune. You should not have rejoiced over the people of Judah of the south on the day of their ruin. You should not have boasted on the day of distress you should not have entered the gate of my people as to give them away, okay? On the day of the calamity, you should not have joined in gloating over Judah's disaster, okay? And joining forces with gloating over people's disasters. You should not have looted his goods, as what he said, as the enemy come in at the night and you stealing all their spoils or their gleanings you should not have done that on the day of their calamity of their storm 
just like some preachers say weeping may endure for a night for a moment but joy comes in the morning by and by but in the morning and sometimes people think it's a literal sense but sometimes it might be not next week it might be six years from now but when God has restored you God is also looking at the ones who were declaring your doom who were inciting your pain who also offered up negative uh, thoughts and actions and words and heap calamity added to your situation and God said you should not have done that you should not have stood at the crossings to cut off his ref his his fugitives who were seeking relief you should not have handed over his survivors on the day of distress for the day of the Lord is near against all the nations as you have done it shall be done to you isn't that something give as you should good measures pressed down shaken over running over shall people give unto your measures it says with the same measure you give that shall be returned to you with the same measures you meet it shall be returned to you so some people say you reap what you sow if you're given in a good spirit and of good compassionate and also are shown out for um, showing up for justice and to speak truth and to continue to show forth in action love and grace and providing for the poor and in doing what you need to do and and showing examples how to help and not hinder you're doing the work uh, of a soldier in God's army it says for the day of the Lord is near against all the nations as you have done it shall be done to you your deeds shall return on your own head so you don't have to seek for danger sometimes people dig a pit for you to fall in and saying well they're gonna just you know let them prosper on and but they don't know the faith and your walk with God they don't know your fruit and your character that is with God that you're operating in integrity and have an upright spirit to do what is right all the time as a lifestyle and so those persons who are envy and jealousies and don't want you to get ahead and and seeking and, and setting roadblocks in front of you God is declaring and said, don't worry about that. The deeds that they're shown will fall on their own head. For as you have drunk on my holy mountain, this is what God is saying to Esau, the descendants of Esau, the Edomites. For as the Edomites drunk, drunk on my holy mountain, all the nations around you shall drink. They shall, they shall drink and gulp down. It's just like gulping down bitterness and shall be as though they had never been. But on Mount Zion, there shall be those that escape, and it shall be holy, and the house of Jacob shall take possession of those who disposed them, those who disposed them, who took them out, who, who showed calamity to them. Okay, Jacob shall possess their land. The house of Jacob shall be a fire okay amen and the house of Joseph a flame that is shining brightly okay and the house of Esau a stubble meaning to ruin it is not driven it is not prevailing but it's to its ruin as a stubble they shall burn them and consume them and there shall be no survivor of the house of Esau that's the judgment that God declared in the Old Testament of the Edomites in the Old Testament of Obadiah for the Lord has spoken those of the Negev shall possess Mount Esau and those of Shepla the land of Philistines and they shall possess the land of Ephraim and the land of Samaria as they started dividing or conquested the land you can see the divisions of land Benjamin shall possess Gilead or Gilead the exiles of Israelites who are in Hela shall possess Phoenicia, as far as Zarephath, 
and the exiles of Jerusalem who are in, in Sephar shall possess the towns of Nebgat. Those who have been saved shall go up to Mount Zion. That means God's holy city. All those who are of the faith shall go up to Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau. So we shall, the house of faith shall take possession and to rule the Edomites. Even in, and it says, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. It doesn't belong to anyone. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. And that ends Obadiah from 1 through verse 21. And God mentions Mount Zion, those who are saved shall rule Mount Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. So in the end, it's the Lord's and the beginning is the Lord because God is from the beginning, from the end. From the end, from the beginning, he declared us to create and bring him praise for his create, created praise. So he created us to give him glory. Amen. And to show forth the works of the Lord. Amen. And this verse in Obadiah 11 through 14, that brief moment when you should not have done this, you should not have entered the gate of my people, you should not have gloated over their calamity, you should not have looted their goods. From the 11 through 14 of that brief prophecy of Obadiah, are powerful evocative of a first-hand account of tragedy. Ten times in four verses. Ten times. Ten times. In four verses, Edom is castigated for their role in the fall of Judah and Jerusalem. Although they didn't bring calamity because it was the Babylonians, but they incited. They continued to mock them and they continued to gloat over them. They continued to to show and loot over their goods. And they continue to, sh to stand in the crossing of their fugitive and did not allow their survivors to go free. They said, it reads, tiny Edom does not compare in military might to the great amount of army of Babylon, yet they are equally culpable, responsible. Edom is guilty for celebrating the demise of their relative Jerusalem or Jacob participating in looting the city and preventing Jude Judean fugitives from escaping carnage. Verse 14 also evokes memories of the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Katrina when those fleeing from the carnage of the storm were turned back from safety at gunpoint. This happened to a United States history where People were fleeing and they were held at, against their own will at gunpoint. Someone was blocking for them to go to safety and says you shouldn't have stood at the crossing to cut the fugitives. So you know where we are as a nation. You know where we are as people. You know where you are in your walk with God to show mercy, to do good and to show justice that's what god requires of all of us in our individual lives in our corporate lives in our community lives in our nation and throughout the world and may you be a safe haven may i be a safe haven for those who need comfort those who need a word of the lord those who need understanding may you continue to be a blessing and during this season, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of our mouth be acceptable in God's sight. May we use our hands and our feet not to prevent people for seeking liberty, for seeking advancement to go higher and to get educated and to go further in their holistic lives. And let us not be envy and let us not grow weary in doing well this holiday season. Bless you and God keep you and be faithful to him because he is faithful to us. Because he first loved us. We didn't love God first, but he first loved us. And that's why we love him. To God be all the glory. Bless you and God's peace be with you. Shalom. Peace be with you. Amen.